Most DePaul students are too young to know that they are actually attending a basketball school. It's been 37 years since the Blue Demons last made it to the Final Four in 1979, and the only evidence left is old photographs and memories passed down by those who witnessed the Blue Demons' success under the father of DePaul basketball, Ray Meyer. Ed Shalafu and his younger brother, Bill, grew up attending DePaul basketball games. Bill, or Uncle Willie as Ray Meyer called him, coached at Ray Meyer's summer basketball camps where he developed a keen understanding for Ray Meyer's basketball philosophy. I went with my parents and my parents um, were born and raised in Chicago and my father went to DePaul and my father would take my mother to DePaul games way back when, way back when, George Mikan, that far back. Take a look at these highlights. All you see are the dunk shots. Yeah, whatever happened to the two-handed set shot? A real highlight in my estimation is a nice chest pass or a bounce pass. George Mikan played at DePaul from 1942 to 1946 and is considered one of the NBA's first superstars and truly dominant big men. Before going pro, he led the Blue Demons to an NIT national championship in 1945. Over 30 years later, the Blue Demons' next transcendent star, Chicago native Mark Aguirre, moved to Lincoln Park to lead the DePaul Blue Demons within three points of defeating Larry Bird's Indiana State Sycamores for a trip to the national championship in 1979. While George Mikan and Mark Aguirre are still legends on Lincoln Park's campus, it's their coach, Ray Meyer, who is still the face of the program. Meyer spent 42 years on the sidelines for the Blue Demons, finishing with a record of 723 wins, 354 losses, and leading the Blue Demons to 13 NCAA tournament appearances, seven trips to the NIT, and two trips to the Final Four, coming in 1943 and 1979. He had the utmost respect for the players. And look at the love affair! The players of Meyer have given their beloved coach his ultimate win. He also had a real good knack of who he was working with and how to coach that player and how to coach that team and what their strength is. Um, when he had Mark Aguirre, um, they pushed the ball up the court. And, and Ray, one of the things, um, you know, you know he's, he's been there forever, but I think what's really downplayed and maybe um, is how great of an offensive mind he was. UCLA gambling defensively, trying to come up with a steal. Tough to stop Bradshaw. They're forcing him into the middle, but DePaul is kicking the ball off. It's to get the wide open as Mikan. He scores. So DePaul patiently getting the good percentage shot. The program peaked in 1979 when Mark Aguirre took the Blue Demons past UCLA on the way to a Final Four appearance where they faced Larry Bird in the Indiana State Sycamores. Number one ranked Indiana State against sentimental favorite DePaul, coached for the 37th year by 65-year-old Ray Meyer. It's always enjoyable to go watch your team win. And, and you certainly felt when you went to that game on that particular night that they were going to win. I mean, it's, it just had the confidence. The team just played well together. Uh, they were well coached. Now with a chance to tie it up, Ray Meyer instructed the Blue Demons to take their time. They did. And Aguirre's turnaround jumper tied it, 71 all. DePaul then forced Indiana State into a turnover. Clyde Bradshaw stole the ball, and Gary Garland put the Blue Demons ahead for the first time in the second half. Now it was anybody's ball game. The winner would meet Michigan State in the finals to determine the 1979 NCAA champion. But the Blue Demons came up just two points short of upsetting Bird and the Sycamores. Five years later, Coach Meyer retired from coaching. He left the reins to his son Joey, his lead assistant, but stayed on the sidelines as the voice of the Blue Demons television broadcast. Ray, being the offensive mind, well, Joey was his assistant, and he was Mr. Defense. He retired. I think that Joe uh, did a fine job, uh, but uh, unfortunately didn't spend as much time uh, coaching as I think he should have uh, deserved. Despite reaching the tournament in seven of his 13 seasons as head coach, Joey Meyer was fired after the 1996-97 season. 
With the Myers out of DePaul basketball, the Blue Demons Foundation quickly crumbled, appearing in just two NCAA tournaments since the departure. In 2010, the Blue Demons hired Oliver Purnell, who had taken the Clemson Tigers to three straight NCAA tournament appearances. But Purnell's time at DePaul was not a success. With two years left on his contract, Purnell resigned after posting a 54-105 in record in his five seasons. Reed Lubin is a color commentator for Radio DePaul Sports and one of the station's top basketball analysts. He agreed to sit down with Good Day DePaul to help break down the Blue Demons. The hiring of Purnell was really exciting when they did hire him. What was it like back in 09 or something like that, 2010? Coming out of Clemson, he'd done a really nice job at Clemson. He had a couple good recruits here and there. But I think it just came down to X's and O's. The team turned the ball over so much. They were they were a really inefficient offensive team. And when you can't score baskets in the other team, and you can't stop the other team, then you're going to go over 2 on both of those fronts. As the Purnell era came to a close, DePaul reached out to Dave Lato, the last coach to lead them to a tournament appearance, in hopes of rejuvenating the depleted program. Riddled by a lack of discipline and a serious turnover addiction, Lato's return to DePaul presented the challenge of rebuilding the Blue Demons basketball culture from its lowest point. As Radio DePaul Sports' go-to play-by-play basketball announcer and host of Blue Demon Weekly, Eli Hershkovich is an authority on DePaul men's hoops. Besides that Lato year where DePaul made it back to the NCAA tournament, DePaul was such a good program back in the 70s and 80s. And ever since Joey Meyer left, when he had that program buzzing, and the buzz was around not only in Lincoln Park, but in the Chicagoland area. Again, besides that one year that Lato had here, there hasn't been much of anything to talk about positively with DePaul men's basketball. In desperate need of a fresh start, DePaul broke ground in fall of 2015 on a new basketball stadium in Chicago's South Loop in hopes of returning basketball to Chicago and success to the program. That's a, that's a big push for recruits to get them here, especially from the Chicagoland area. Not only that, though, you're going to have high school tournaments there. And some high school players are going to be like, wow, I'm playing in the DePaul Arena. What would it be like to play here for real? With a new arena on the horizon in Rosemont, all but in the rear view, Coach Lato can now prepare for his second year back with the program, where it seems that a new stadium is not all the Blue Demons have to build on. It's a huge part of his future. As a freshman averaging 11 points per game, Big East play, about 10 in regular season play, I cannot wait to see what Eli Kane develops into. Was on the all Big East freshman team, led the conference in three-point shooting. The future is bright if Eli Kane continues to develop. How, how should he shut down Chris Dunn, one of the best players in college basketball, one of the most well-rounded players in college basketball? That's what, that's what I took away from that victory was, yes, DePaul just beat the number 11 team in the country. Eli Kane, though, again, is the face of this DePaul men's basketball program, and that's what I took away from that win. Yes, Kane only had six or seven points, but he shut down one of the best players in college basketball. That's starting to boom, and it, it can only benefit the program. I did see more fight this year. That sounds very cliche, but it seemed like the team was being coached a little bit tighter. It seemed like their rotations were better defensively. Offensively, they were definitely inconsistent at times. And I think a lot of that relies on you want to have a good penetrator, but you need to have the three-point shooting around. And I don't know if DePaul had that yet, but I think with the recruiting that Lato should be able to do and with guys like Eli Kane really maturing into next year, that, that, that leap from year one to year two should be a lot larger than the leap from the end of Purnell to the first year of Lato. With Eli Kane coming into his sophomore season and Lato aggressively on the recruiting trail, the Blue Demons are taking steps in the right direction. I, I had gone to see Devin Gage this year at Curie, and he's one of DePaul's top recruits next year. DePaul has Al Eichelberger, Brandon Cyrus, and Devin Gage coming in next year. And Gage was telling me how, how often Lato comes out to his games. And that's what you need from your head coach. Forget about the, the aspects of the new arena for a second. You need a head coach that's dedicated and is willing to go out and talk to your players, but also be honest. And that's something that Gage really mentioned too, was that Lato told him, this is what I want from you next year. It's going to take about maybe two to three years before this team makes a push towards that NCAA tournament. Maybe in the next one to two years, I'm hoping with if Gage and Cyrus can improve, or not improve, but can develop next year. But that might even take time. It might take a year for this team to make it to the NIT. And then you make you start thinking about, well, maybe a couple NIT appearances, then you get to the NCAA tournament. I'm thinking four or five years before DePaul gets back to the NCAA tournament.
A lot of little things will spell the difference in this one. Ray Meyer knows so well. Especially once they add more and more talent, then they're looking to make runs at potential Final Fours. And I, I wouldn't put it past Lado to actually accomplishing that, but you have to be patient. It does take some time. Fans hope their patience will be rewarded as the Blue Demons look to rebuild on the same foundation laid by Ray Meyer so long ago. Smart play, tough defense, and a home court advantage. For Good Day to Paul, I'm Adam Schell.